Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to make a right to know law motion, please. Okay. I hereby move to direct the town attorney to send in behalf of the Board of Selectmen an RSA 91-A request for information to all members of the Budget Committee requesting copies of any and all written correspondence, including but not limited to emails directed to a quorum or majority of the Budget Committee members among themselves and from others regarding matters being considered by the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. <coughs> Have a motion. I'll second it. Is there a second? Any discussion? All is in. Uh, d discussion, yeah. I'd like the town attorney's input on the uh, genesis of this issue. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. There have come to my attention uh, several emails, uh, some of which are from the chairman of the budget committee, directed to all members of the budget committee. Now, there. this is something that has occurred before in other towns and has been the subject of major litigation, very costly to those other towns, in which it is deemed that the uh, sending of such emails creates the opportunity for contemporaneous communication among members and essentially is the, a public meeting without following the requisites of a, of a meeting. And uh, in one major case at the Superior Court level, uh, which has been brought to the attention of the Budget Committee last year, as well as this year, um, and, and other town boards here that I've spoken to, uh, the result has been um, that uh, the actions of the committee have been found to be invalid and have been invalidated by the court. Significant attorney's fees have been assessed against the towns involved representing several hundred thousand dollars and um, not only uh, incurring their own attorney's costs but having to pay the other side's costs and uh, also or ordering those uh, bodies to uh, undergo training in the right to know law. And so uh, we've warned the Budget Committee about that. The New Hampshire Municipal Association in their lectures has warned the Budget Committee about that. And uh, unfortunately, there seems to be still emails that, that are in violation of the right to know law. And it's important to uh, not only to have that stop, but to understand uh, what's going on that's uh, uh, communication outside the public meeting. And that is what is this motion is directed to. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jerome. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, when I was a selectman, served with the uh, appointed uh, chairman of the Budget Committee. I had Mr. Welch terminate my email access from that uh, select board member for the same reason and uh, refused to uh, um, continue that illegal practice. It was perennial. It was continuous. And uh, it would not stop. There's been education levels by the New Hampshire Municipal Association, by the town attorney. There are two important governing laws uh, amongst the myriad that uh, public officials subject themselves to for, for the big bucks, as we say, that we make here. And uh, one is, uh, is a selectman, 41, colon 8, and that is to govern the prudential affairs of this town. Uh, it's a $60 million revenue plus bonded articles. Uh, that's split down the middle with the school, is operations, more or less. Uh, it's an important corporation. We saw the breadth and scope of the Warren Articles. We see the life safety. We see the protection of property in, in human life. The other is 91A, and that is that the people in this town, under the Prudential Affairs Clause of the Selectmen, have confidence that the meetings of those that they elect, and in this case, Ms. Woolsey, that is appointed, they are making no decisions privately. They have no consensus, and that's the genesis of, of Mr. Well, uh, Mr. Waddell's motion. And this is very, very important, and it continues. And there are myriad examples that I have personally viewed uh, in the last several weeks and the several months. Additionally, there appear to be third parties that are having their material cut and pasted into the budget committee members. And I could be wrong, but it, it would appear to the layman and uh, the disinterested party that there are, there are third parties that are contributing to budget committee communications that are going to a full quorum uh, about decisions. And uh, there's outside legal counsel, um, if I may say so, the New Hampshire Municipal Association has reviewed this. They have recommendations um, that are more stern than this simple 91A, but uh, the public needs to know about this. The legal reference that uh, town council 
uh, alludes to. He's been part of the briefing and the indoc, if you will, for all board members. Uh, and that was done by this board and the town manager and uh, Mr. Gerald. And it's uh, Porter versus Sandwich. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal expenses, reversals of decisions, and the budget committee uh, is voting on budgets. Uh, they have a significant uh, influence in this town, and rightfully so, because the town has decided to have that. But it, there appears to be a perennial violation of a fundamental and important law. And if we as selectmen allow this to continue, then what other laws do we not bring uh, to the attention of the people that are being violated? And we have police departments, or a police department, a fire department, we have zoning, we have all myriad regulations, ordinance, and laws that we're, we are up, up, upheld and we are trusted to enforce. And that comes under the Prudential Affairs, and it's a state statute. It's very, very important. This is a difficult uh, subject to bring up. Uh, it's one that we have uh, educated all boards about in the Budget Committee where they're appointed chairman, uh, not elected, uh, who used to sit as a select person, uh, uh, refuses or is incapable of stopping, and that is the reason that we have to have this unpleasant conversation this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Town Esquire. And You've had correspondence with the committee about this, yes? Yes, you, you, I have. When when one of these emails came out, I responded that this is an email that seems that violates the right to know law, potentially exposes the committee to having its actions invalidated, and uh, and worse. And you've you've consulted. I've run by that same those same communications by the New Hampshire Municipal Association, which has indicated that yes, these are communications that are in fact a public meeting outside of a public meeting. And I just wanted to state that Stephen Buckley explained that at the NHMA seminar that was requested by the Budget Committee back in May. And yes. I'm included in the emails as well and have told them numerous times that I will never respond to any of those emails. And yet they still continue to ask me to email the whole group rather than the chairman because sometimes the chairman doesn't get the email off to them. I won't do that. I mean, I don't know what the problem is, but they don't understand it. Various members of that committee do not understand it. They think if no one responds, it's okay. That's not how the law works. Correct. Are there any other boards that are doing this? Uh, any to, other instances of other boards in not, Hampton? Not, not to my knowledge. When this Porter versus Sandwich decision came out, I met with a number of the other boards, in addition to the budget committee, to brief them on what this this uh, law means and that case in particular. Any other questions? So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you.